Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am super glad to have you here. So in today's video, we are going to do part two of talking about the fever, how to best reduce the fever, and also what are the, the best herbal remedies, essential oils to use when it comes to fighting fever altogether. So first of all, uh, I have included the link in the description box below on the first part of the video, which was yesterday. If you want to check that out, please do, because it has really important information about using herbal remedies to reduce fever. So another thing that I also wanted to say in from the very beginning is that you should contact your doctor if you have a temperature of 39.5 Celsius or higher or a temperature of 38.5 that last longer than three days. This is really important. You should also go to the hospital immediately if you have a fever that uh, you experience along with a stiff neck, severe headache and also a rash that doesn't fade when pressed beneath the the side of a glass. Another thing that you also, also should know from the very beginning is that the symptoms that need medical attention are uh, you experience a fever along with extreme drowsiness, shortness of breath, burning on, uh, as you urinate, and also red streaks near the wound and sensitivity to light. All these symptoms along with a fever, you should, uh, sorry, or any of these symptoms along with having a fever, you should go to the hospital immediately. And also consult your doctor about any fever in infants younger than six months and all these uh, remedies and essential oils that we talk about in this video should not be tried on children under the age of six and you should also consult a practitioner a medical practitioner when you are confused on what to do so another thing now that we are completing this video part two that i wanted to talk about i didn't have time to talk about in the previous video because i try my best to include to make sure that the videos are as condensed as possible is using the uh, the power of the spices when fighting a fever. So one of the most important spices that you can use in th this case is canine pepper. Really important. All you have to do is sprinkle a little bit on your food when you have a fever. So one of the most important things is that induces sweating. And we talked about the importance of sweating in the previous video in part one, how it's really important to induce sweating gently uh, through a couple of different ways to help eliminate the fever as well and to help raise your immune system when fighting a fever. So one of the most com important components of the canine pepper is capsic uh, capsicum. Uh, capsicum makes you sweat and also it, it promotes the rapid blood circulation. Another different spice that you can also use, which is a, a little bit less powerful than uh, canine pepper, is heating uh, spices such as ginger, such as cinnamon, and uh, also, garam masala is really important. It contains about seven or so spices that are all heating to the body. You can also sprinkle a little bit in your on your food as well. Really important also when fighting a fever and when trying to raise your immune system is to focus on heating foods uh, that help to like strengthen your immune system. One of these things that I can also think about is broths and soups. Really important because what you can do when you make, for example, a vegetable uh, broth or a vegetable soup or a chicken broth, which is much more powerful, is that you can include the uh, spices in that along alongside the vegetables and alongside the uh, chicken that you're using in the broth because it also helps to induce sweating it helps to raise your immune system so i highly recommend to make either a vegetable broth or chicken uh, broth when fighting a fever so another remedy that i also want to talk about or another way to combat a fever is simply soaking your socks you can try the wet soak treatment so what the wet soak treatment is is that it's a popular folk remedy for fever. All you have to do is just first warm your feet in hot water, then soak a thin pair of cotton socks in cold water. And then you have to uh, simply uh, like squeeze out the excess water and then put on just before bed. You pull out a pair of dry wool socks over the wet ones. So first cotton socks, soak them into the uh, cold water, squeeze out the excess water and then put them on. On top of the wet cold uh, socks that you have just put on, you put on a pair of dry wool socks over the wet ones. So this approach is really important because what it does is that it helps ease the fever by drawing the 
blood to the feet. Also, this dramatically increases blood circulation, which is really important. Do not try this if your bedroom is uncomfortably cold and chilly because it can have uh, the opposite effect as well. Another way you can also draw blood to the feet, which is really important, is using a mustard foot bath. So first of all, in a container that's large enough for your feet, you need to add a, a old baking dish that you're not using and that you do not want to use, you want to leave just for this purpose, and then you add the cold baking dish to the container and then add two teaspoons of mustard powder per liter of hot water, then soak your feet for about 10 to 15 minutes. Really important, draw the blood to your feet to help your body, uh, gently warm your body and help in, uh, increase the blood circulation as well. So as we said, a um, uh, a large container to soak your feet in and then you add an old baking dish and then you add two teaspoons per liter uh, you add two teaspoons of mustard powder per liter of hot water soak your feet and you're ready to go another thing that you can also use which is known as an old folk remedy for treating a fever is to soak a sheet in cold water and then wrap yourself in it. So unfortunately, the doctors advise against lowering your body temperature too quickly. Uh, so you use tepid rather than cold water. And then you cover the wet sheet with a large beach towel or blanket and then lie down for about 15 minutes. You can also unwrap yourself when the wet sheet starts to get warm. Another thing that you also need to keep in mind when fighting a fever, which is super important, is to make sure you are well hydrated. So to avoid dehydration, you need to drink 8 to 12 glasses of water a day. You can also drink sports drinks like Gatorade or you can better off take a um, coconut water because it's really important to make sure you are well hydrated. It's really important to help in giving you the nutrients, to giving you the electrolytes that you need, that you are losing through the fever and through sweating as well. Also, another thing that you can do is um, you can drink fruit juices, which are high in vitamin C. They're really good choices. And also vitamin C helps your immune system to fight off the infection. Uh, if you are not able to drink fruit ju juices, you can also... Uh, drink uh, smoothies shakes as well another thing that you can do is cold grapes also provide hydration and they are also a soothing treat if you are living in a warm climate you can also put the grapes into the freezer and then enjoy them cold as they are frozen they will also be very soothing to your body we have reached the end of this video I hope you enjoyed it if you have gotten anything out of this video uh, please like, share and subscribe, support the channel and I'd love to have you on board. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.